Welcome to the Tucson Indian Center's Men's Virtual Day event. My name is Jacob Bernal and I serve as the Executive Director of the Center. In 2021, the Tucson Indian Center completed a comprehensive community health needs assessment report. Looks like this. I'd like to take this opportunity to share some important health information from this valuable report. The sharing will come from three specific areas from the report. The first area is called the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System. This section revealed some very important health data. Namely, one third of all respondents reported their overall health as poor to fair. Also, one third of all the men respondents reported feeling down, depressed, and even hopeless. And shockingly, over one half of all respondents reported losing a loved one, a family member or friend from COVID-19. The second part of the assessment I'd like to share with you is from the Arizona Health Department. And they shared information with the Tucson Indian Center regarding emergency department visits. For Indian males, the top four reasons for the visits to the emergency department were alcohol-related disorders, other specified upper respiratory disorders and infections, superficial injuries, contusions with initial encounter, and lastly, abdominal pain or digestive signs and symptoms. The third and final area I'd like to share with you from our community health needs assessment is hospital admissions. The most common reason for a hospital admission for urban men is a good reason. That's a live birth. So that is a very good reason, the birth of a child. The second reason is septicemia, which is essentially blood poisoning from bacteria or other toxins. The third area is alcohol-related disorders. The fourth area is diabetes. And last is depressive disorders. These findings from the report may seem discouraging and even depressing. However, there's some very good news. And that good news is with regular checkups and targeted screenings, you can make a dramatic difference to elevate your health status. Well, what type of health screenings are out there? What should we consider as Indian men? Number one is A1C for glucose. That will give us a good indication of our diabetes risk. Another screening is C-relative protein, or excuse me, C-reactive protein, that can be a major marker for cardiovascular disease. Another screening is prostate-specific antigen, or prostate cancer. And lastly, the very uncomfortable colonoscopy to determine and detect colon abnormalities. Also, we can really elevate our health status by annual or semi-annual doctor's visits and exams. The first one is an annual physical to assess our overall health. Another important assessment during these visits is our blood pressure to ensure we have a healthy heart. Also, skin exams to see if we have cancers on our body. Dental appointments for good tooth and gum health. And lastly, we can't forget our eyes. So vision checks to determine if our vision is proper. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for me to share this important information with you about Indian urban health status in Tucson, Arizona. We hope you take this opportunity to contact the Tucson Indian Center to learn more about the assessment, other health topics, and to hear the exciting news that the Tucson Indian Center will be opening a clinic this year in 2022. Please remember, in order to take care of our family and all our loved ones and friends, we first must take care of ourselves. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Michael Spotterwolf. 
I'm the finance director here at the Tucson Indian Center, but I want to welcome you to the Men's Day event. And I was asked to sing a song to kind of get the, the day started off in a good way. And um, this song talks about people coming from all areas, all corners of the earth, all four directions. And it's talking about our friend, the Kola coming and um, so anyway I want to sing this song to and encourage uh, all you men to uh, keep up with your health um, see your doctors regularly and um, do your do your part to stay well so here's a beginning song <clears throat> Good afternoon, my name is Alex Lewis and I'm the new interim board chairman of the Tucson Indian Center. This is my friend Rob. He likes to be called Big Snoop Rob for some reason. Uh, he works in IT. Uh, before you call me, turn it off and on. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so anyway, we're here to talk about how to regularly schedule maintenance your car and um, talk about how to take care of it and things like that. And when I mean by your car, I actually mean your body. So we'll take it from here and we'll show you how to do that. Oh, hey. So we're back here talking again. So you should treat your doctor's appointments for your body like those maintenance checkups for your car. Unlike a car, if it breaks down or gets wrecked, you just buy a new one. But you only get one body. And if it gets wrecked, you just can't get a new one. All right, people, and statistically more men tend to eat more when it's time to go for those doctor's appointments. When your car starts making a weird noise, 
most people attend to take it into the mechanic or get the pump fixed. Don't be that guy who ignores the noise and turns up the radio just to sound it out. Take care of your body like you would take care of your car. So Rob, what kind of car do you have? Dodge Charger Hellcat. He has a Hemi Charger. How do you like it? Oh, you know, it gets me where I gotta go. That's it? No, I love it. It's a beautiful car. It drives fast. But more importantly, it functions like a well-oiled machine. And why is that? Because I take care of her. And because I take care of her, she takes care of me. What's the name of your car? Monica. Monica? Like Del Monica. Like Del Monica? Del Monica. Only the best. <laughs> For me, my body, and my car. All right. So you got a Hemi running in you too? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, Rob, so how often do you get your car maintenance? Every 5,000 miles or six months, whatever comes first. How often do you get those uh, oil changes for your car? Uh, as often as my mechanic tells me to, you know. Uh, it depends on the type of oil I'm using. So I kind of defer to him. He has me on a maintenance cycle. He writes down the amount of miles that I need to hit before I need to go back and see him. And it's important that I do that with the car. And I find that since I started doing that, the car has been running a lot smoother the pools are a lot nicer. It just feels like a more comfortable ride overall. So I feel that it's best to just check with your mechanic for your car or your doctor for your body to get an idea of what frequency works for you and your vehicle. What kind of shoes are you wearing right now? Uh, I'm wearing the Yeezy 350s, uh, mostly because they're comfortable. And then the, your car? Oh, my car is running right now the uh, Goodyear uh, Performance. Awesome. Right now, yeah. The Performance Eagles. Uh, it's good to take care of your tires and your feet. Always, you got to keep your shoes extra clean for yourself and for everybody else. You know, you don't want to be caught slipping, whether it's be with your tires or, you know, out in the streets. Uh, when you fill it up, what do you fill it up with? I go based off of manufacturer recommendations. So you could use the cheap stuff like the 87. I like to use 91 only because that's what's required for me. If my, you know, user manual for my car said 87, I would definitely have no shame in running it, but this car wants 91, and that's what we got to give her. All right. So I see uh, when we came and got in the car, you know, your car was looking a little clean. How, how often do you uh, do you like to keep it clean? As far as like cleanliness in the car goes, I think it's important to watch it, and you know, it like things like uh, bird poop can oxidize the paint. Uh, a lot of dust buildup, especially during monsoon season, can get into the bearings of your wheels and stuff like that. So I like to just keep an eye out for it. When I start to see any sort of buildup, I like to take it in to get it clean. I like the paint to look good, so I try to go based off of that. Come on in, sir. You're in the video as well. Come on in. Driving safe is also important. 10 and two, be a courteous driver. But yeah, it's important to keep your car clean, just like it's important to keep your body clean. Yep, make sure you got good hygiene, people. Please shower. <laughs> All right. Well, it was nice talking with you all. I hope you can take this uh, advice that me and uh, Rob have for you today. And, you know, just remember to stay healthy and remember to, you know, treat your body like a car, but specifically your dream car. Your dream car. Yep.
Hello, everyone. My name is Nick. I am a COVID-19 community health representative here at Tucson Indian Center. Uh, the previous video that you just watched was from the health services department. And as we transition towards the next topic and the next speaker, I'd like to stay on the idea of reasons why people and specifically men do not seek out preventative care. Um, and so from the reasons that were highlighted in the video itself, some of the topics that were covered were afraid of what medical conditions might be discovered, too busy, not sick enough, discomfort of the exam. Um, if these reasons do sound familiar, or if you know someone they particularly resonate with, or even if they don't, um, this is still a really good chance for you to take a step back and ask yourself why you haven't gone specifically. Um, so in addition to these reasons highlighted, a big topic that Chucho here is going to cover is the inability to be vulnerable and the idea behind the man box as a reason and a means for why men and not just indigenous men do not seek out um, screenings. So before I get further into this, I'd like to introduce our next pre presenter. This is Chucho Ruiz with A Call to Men. Thank you so much, Nick. I appreciate you, man. Um, hello, everyone. Yali. Uh, my name is uh, Chucho and I'm of the Udeve Kamanarka peoples and I am also uh, representing a call to men, which is a national organization that advocates to end um, uh, all violence against women and girls and at the same time look at the work that we need to do to create healthier communities for, for men and for all gender, two-spirit folks. Um, as well. And so I, I wanted to, as Nick had mentioned, just kind of uh, share a little bit about a, a, a term that we've coined here to call to men that we call the man box that really speaks to the collective socialization of men. And today just kind of kind of uh, making those connections right to like some of the things you've seen in the video, um, specifically that are we feel are, are a direct result of the ways that we're socialized. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to share a little bit about, again, what we call uh, the man box, right? And uh, so the man box, again, being the collective socialization of manhood, right? And um, part of the reason why we refer to this, this collective socialization process as a, as a box is because there's a lot of limitations. There's restrictions. Um, so we want to look at you know, is how could, as many of us are familiar with this term, is like, how could we think outside the box? And in some cases, like break out of that box, right? Because um, being in a box is like confined, right? And it's, and it's sometimes like being trapped and, and, um, and we're not reaching our full potential, right? Or our fullest capacity. And so some of the messages that we see in the man box that we all receive in, in indirect or direct ways, whether it be through our peers, through our uh, through media, through school, um, through relig religious institutions, uh, uh, every aspect of like when we think about how we're socialized, right? We're receiving these messages, whether it be very overt or like covert, right? Like very subtle. And so a lot of it is that like no pain, no fear. Um, you have to be aggressive. Um, if you're a, a young person that is malidentified, you know, um, you should be involved in some type of sports and athletics. Um, and then again, with the, with the no fear, like you should be courageous. Um, you should be tough. You should be strong. You should be powerful. You should be dominating in charge. Be making the decisions. You're the protector. Right. Um, and along with the protector, you're also the provider. Right. Um, never express feelings or uh, never show weaknesses. So a lot of these things um, we still we feel like come up in different ways. And then there's like the rules to it. Right. Like make sure that you're not doing these things. Right. And um, and unfortunately, we've equated a lot of um, like what we think is like so like soft or weak. We'll, we'll oftentimes equate those with like femininity, right? So there's there's something to look at there as well, right? When we say like, don't throw or punch like a girl or don't act like a girl, like um, the things there for us to pay attention to is like, what does that mean for us in terms of, um, of who we are as men, right? And this, this, this um, socialization process 
is is something that men of all backgrounds are experiencing right so um and so we want to have a conversation that looks more closely at indigenous men native men so um this is what we call the cycle of consequences right where if we're receiving the socialization these ideas of the man box um there's there's consequences to it and a lot of it is uh, is consequences on our own well-being our own health right and so um this this cycle is circulated by this idea of like not asking for help because i am in control i have i do have the authority I do wear the pants, those types of messages and ideas that we receive, um, it, it doesn't allow us to be vulnerable, right? And if, if we're not being vulnerable um, and, and asking for help, you know, we're, maybe we're not achieving the things that we need to achieve. And if we're not doing that, then we have a sense of, of, of low self-worth and then we feel stuck. And then if we feel stuck, you know, like how uh, sometimes there's an outburst right and how that's related to like trauma or how it could cause trauma or as a result of trauma and then we end up um involved in the criminal justice system right and this is like a vicious cycle that goes on and on and so we this is an invitation for us to look at um how is this impacting our health right so we think about um when we tell young young boys we tell uh young children that are malidentified um don't cry like why are you crying don't cry like suck it up um it, it it really prohibits this idea of like having any type of emotional intelligence or emotional awareness and um and combine that with the inability to ask for help um it creates health challenges and we we put mental health um because we know that like if you're not able to like speak right to um the, the fact that you've experienced harm, right, and or explore what you're feeling and be with your feelings, it can impact your, your mental health more than anything. But we also put that in parentheses because we know it has other uh, impacts on your overall health. And um, so we wanted to bring in the medicine wheel as a tool, right? This has always been a tool for many indigenous communities, maybe not all. Um, but as we're looking at this socialization process and how we navigate the world, um, this this man box, um, and, and and I guess what I'll say is the man box isn't all bad. There's some things in there that could be like really beautiful, but where where it could become problematic is where we're saying like all men need to be this way, right? So what type of impact does it mean if we're not asking for help? right? Um, there's isolation, right? So how does that impact, you know, our social, our, our, our environment, the people, uh, our relationships with Earth Mother, with the natural elements, with the two-legged, with other relatives, other human beings, right? Our own spirituality, our, again, our mental health, right? And then our physical health, which we're talking a lot about um, uh, during this, this, this time and this month when this, you know, with this message, uh, in terms of seeking uh, medical uh, help or medical attention, right? Like, how does that man box really impact um, all aspects of our wellness, right? Our holistic wellness, what we call, right? Because it's all intertwined and interconnected. So um, what we feel is that we start to disrupt, you know, we start to disrupt um, some of those ideas, some of those stereotypes of what it means to be men, right? And um, so what we're saying is like healthy manhood is the solution, right? Um, part of like being um, part of those reasons that we found that we found in the previous video is like that um, feeling of discomfort of wanting or like getting an exam is like our inability to be vulnerable, right? Like we don't want to be open. We don't want to open ourselves up, right? To like putting ourselves in, in somebody uh, you know putting ourselves in somebody else's hands right um and not being sick enough is because it's this idea of like we have to be tough we have to suck it up like you know i'm like probably hurting but it's like ah it's not so bad right and then like the idea of being too busy too busy doing what most of the time probably working 
right? So like not valuing our own health over this idea that we have to provide all the time, right? And so like, you know, we, when we think about family, when we think about relatives, kinship, like we want to be here for the long haul. We want to be around, right? So it's like, how do we take a pause and like re-engage in like self-care? And, and really as indigenous people, we think about us care, right? Because we, we function as, as a communal, uh, we're, we're communal people, right? So um, we, we think uh, some of those, uh, those specific pieces of the, of the man box is disrupting it would be embrace and express a full range of emotion. Do not conform to the pressure to always be fearless, tough, and in control. Model a healthy respect for manhood to other Native men and boys. And this is key and critical, right? Like it, um, crying in front of younger generation, uh, setting, setting appointments to go to the doctor in front of um, taking them to the doctor. And even if you're going through those experiences, like how, how could you uh, also model that, right? To the younger generation. So um, that, that's uh, our message. Um, as, as we're thinking about uh, healthier uh, living, healthier experiences, um, it, as it relates to this idea of the man boss and how we could break out of that. So I'm gonna pass it back over to you, Nick, and just say thank you again for the opportunity to be a part of this. And um, yeah, just looking forward and excited and ho holding a lot of hope for us as men. Uh, thank you so much, Chucho, for joining in today and being able to share the message behind the man box and what a call to men specifically does. Um, <clears throat> as we move further into Men's Health Day, um, I just want to say thank you, Chucho, for being here again, and we'll move on to the next uh, speaker itself. But other than that, um, thanks for joining in. Hello, my name is Arthur Bailey. I'm 63, year old, 63 years old. I was born October 22nd, 1958. My parents are Pauline Teresa Noriego Bailey. She is from an autumn village in Mexico. My dad's Stanley Nicholas Bailey from Wak, which is Santa Vera. And all my life I grew up, I'm an urban Indian. I grew up in Tucson. I wasn't, didn't grow up on the reservation. Um, I went to public school, C. Rose Wakefield Pueblo. That's who I am. Like I was saying earlier, when I was talking to uh, Kay Cassie, that uh, if I would have known I was gonna live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but you know, I thank God that I'm here and Everything that I've done so far is to help better myself, maybe live a little, few more years. Now that I know that the end is coming, you know, which we are going to all experience that. But uh, yeah, you have to stay on top of your health care because you never know how long or when or what's going to happen to you in your life. And uh, you, whatever you do in the past will affect your future. Okay, in uh, 2003, I was working at Santa Vera Church at the Mission. I was in selling candles and answering tourist questions in the museum, and I worked part-time in the gift shop. And at that time, I was always feeling run down. I'd only worked there four, four hours a day, 8 to 12. And after that, I would go home to my mom's, and I would, I would just want to sleep. And I kept doing that and doing that. I did it for about a month or two, and then my mother said, there's something wrong, you need to go get yourself checked out. So I ended up going to Santa Vera Clinic, the Indian Health Service Unit here at Santa Vera, and they did an EKT and found out that I was going through heart failure. So they, they took me by ambulance to Banner, and they did the, uh, the test on my heart and found out that it was I was doing it, and then three days later, I had open heart surgery, I had five bypasses. I believe probably it would have been preventative, but I was so far advanced in my 
heart condition that you know I was glad that I caught it when I did. Mm, okay. Thank you. Okay. My next question: How often do you see your doctors? I see my doctors. I see Doctor Whitechop every two months, but because. Right now, I'm going to heart, kidney, and liver failure. I see my liver specialist and my kidney, my uh, Dr. Perves, every almost every two weeks. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of labs because mm -hmm. they're monitoring the functions of my kidneys. I, I, this is my opinion. I believe that you know we all decide what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and when we're going to do it. But I know within my family, a lot of them wait to the last minute. I've had relatives in my family that waited past the point of no return. That if they would have went to and seek help, health, you know, their health uh, providers, they probably would have lived a little longer and not die at such an early age. That's why you have to prevent. You have to be able and willing to do what you have to do in order to survive. In my opinion, you have to do it for your own and your family. Because, you know, we all live in a community where we have to be here to help one another. God gives us gifts which we're supposed to share with one another. And we're here to help everybody. And you know, it's selfish if you just think of yourself and only yourself. You have to care and love everybody in order to get along. And all you can do is take care of yourself. The better person you are is the better person you can be for everybody. Hello everybody, I'm Dominique Henry, Registered Dietitian Nutritionist. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. So June is Men's Health Month, which is really important uh, because men tend to not want to prioritize their health sometimes for different reasons. So this is a really good series. We should thank the Indian Center for hosting and, and putting this on. So like I said, I'm the registered dietitian. I help people um, with their diet and we try to figure out ways that they can make themselves healthier um, by choosing healthier foods to eat. So for me, um, I wanted us to focus on, um, you know, chronic conditions that affect uh, men more. So that would be like uh, prostate health, diabetes, um, hypertension, which is just uh, raised blood pressure, um, obesity. So those things tend to affect men more. Um, you know, I think if anybody is experiencing any of those symptoms or have any of those chronic conditions, it can lead to other ones. So it's really important to stay on top of your medical appointments, getting labs done, things like that. That's the only way that we're really gonna know if we're healthy from the inside out, all right? So, but for me, I wanted us to focus on um, men's prostate health. All right, so the prostate is a very small gland in the lower body, which is responsible for um, reproductive health. So it helps us reproduction, it helps, um, you know, with going to the bathroom. This is about how big it is. So it's pretty small considering all that it does. You know, something this small is inside of men and it helps with reproduction. So I think that's pretty amazing. But we wanna make sure that we're keeping the body very healthy so that that stays healthy. And how you can do that through nutrition is just by selecting, um, foods that are gonna nourish your body. So that's eating things like uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, um, eating whole grains, and whole grains could be like whole, whole wheat bread, it could be oatmeal, it could be um, corn tortillas, whole grain pastas, brown rice, so there's lots of options in there. And the fruits and the vegetables and these whole grains, those are plant foods, and they're gonna provide us a lot of fiber, which will help keep us full, that helps with portion sizing so that we don't eat too much. So those foods are really important. And then when it comes to having protein, we wanna make sure that we're not having too much. And we wanna limit our uh, red meat consumption, which those would be like um, beef products, um, lamb, goat, pork, anything that's very highly processed, so processed meats, 
if your meat comes um, pre-packaged or in a can, it's probably very processed and we want to limit that because those foods will also have a lot of salt, which we want to limit as well. So things that are um, pre-packaged in a box, a bag, a can, those will be um, highly processed foods that also contain a lot of salt, which we want to limit. So if you have um, canned foods, if, if it's something that you can rinse, you're going to be able to reduce some of that salt um, just a little bit. So that, that'll that be helpful. Other things you want to do for your diet to keep your body healthy is to limit um, hydrogenated fats. Those are, those are also called trans fats. You'll find those, and again, packaged foods, you'll find those in the drive-thru. Um, those, those types of fats are not good for our bodies. Um, Healthier fats would be things like um, natural fats that come from nuts and seeds, avocados, um, olive oils. Those will have omega-3 fatty acids, which are good for our heart and our brain. So those would be healthier fats to choose. All right. And then last thing, like we mentioned earlier, just watching your portion size. We just want to make sure we're not eating too much. Even if it's healthy foods, too much of a good thing, you know, we don't want to do that either. So those are all tips to um, incorporate into your eating pattern. So you need a partner with your diet. Okay, so in addition to having a healthy diet, you wanna make sure that you're also getting regular physical activity, which could be as simple as taking a brisk walk. So brisk meaning you're, it's not a leisure walk, you know, but you're, you have a kind of a good pace and you can have a conversation with somebody, but you're kind of working a little bit harder to breathe. So that's the pace that we're looking for. It could be a brisk walk, it could be a hike, um, washing your car. Those are all things we can do. If walking is not um, gonna work for you, you can look up on your phone and see what kind of chair exercises or seated exercises you could do. The whole point is we want it. We want to get the um, lungs and the heart working. So then again, we're working from the inside out. We're trying to be healthy from the inside out. All right. So. We want to make sure that we are having a healthy, balanced diet. We want to make sure that we have regular physical activity. And again, we want to make sure that we're going to see the doctor. Maybe you want to see a dietitian like me to help you work out um, how you can have a healthy, balanced diet. These are things that we need to do to take care, care of our entire body. So take, care, take advantage of the resources, you, you know, as you listen to the other talks throughout this web, uh, the virtual event, you know, see what you can use and incorporate today. So I think today for what we talked about here, it could be easy to choose an apple over a processed snack this afternoon. Um, it might be an easy thing to go for a brisk walk somewhere uh, to get some physical activity in. So those are things that we can do today to help improve our health not just for men, but for everybody in the family. But because we're focusing on men's health, we wanna encourage the men in our lives to take a look at their health and say, what, what can we do to be healthier? How, when was the last time you saw a doctor? The Indian Center works with Dominique, if you wanna go see her, to look at your diet. So these are all things, again, available to you. Please take advantage. So I hope that you are able to use some of this information um, and reach out to Christine Chavez over at the Indian Center if you'd like to have an appointment with me one on one, we could look at your diet and see what um, healthy changes we could make. Or we have group classes as well. So I look forward to meeting more of you and I hope you enjoy the rest of the virtual event. Thank you. Bye. Hi, I am Christine Chavez. I am the Diabetes Prevention Coordinator here. I will be talking today about osteoporosis and the benefits of getting uh, um, your muscles, your bones strong. There are several types of, actually there's two types of exercises that you can do for bone density. Okay, and bone density is a measurement of minerals in your, in your bones. And they can do that by x-ray, um, it's called a tomography and that's how they can measure your bone density and if your bone density isn't high you can uh, get fractures um, fall brittle bones so also um, doing exercises at least 30 minutes a day and practicing balance can help you from falls 
uh, exercise helps with heart circulation. It gives you a healthy body weight and you sleep better. It also lowers your blood sugars um, if you're a person with diabetes and it um, supports bone health. Um, there's high impact and low impact. So when you do a high impact exercise, that means like running, jogging, dancing. And dancing is also a, a form of um, happiness, healing. Um, do you listen to music? You can dance, you know, just feel free. And, and it helps um, heal your soul, make your heart happy. And um, also jump rope, you know, and if you can't jump rope, um, because, you know, uh, you just can't some some of us can't jump rope some of us can so jump roping is a very good way of uh, making your bones stronger and um, pre uh, prevent osteoporosis you know after after a certain age women start losing uh, bone density and they get we get shorter so that's one way of you also finding out if you have osteoporosis because sometimes our our height shortens we can also do a low impact um, exercises like brisk walking. Tai Chi is a very good way of um, doing some low impact uh, exercise for your bones. And, um, and it also calms and it meditating and very soothing and it helps you sleep better. And we recommend 30 minutes a day for uh, exercise anyway. But, you know, also um, lifting weights, you know, just weight bearing. Uh, an elliptical can help also uh, in a treadmill. You know, and brisk walk, you can just brisk walk um, 15 minutes one way, 15 minutes back, you got your 30 minutes in. You know, and it's very important that, you know, you do this with a doctor's orders. Don't go out and doing high impact exercises if, you're, if you can, if you have some restrictions. Um, on your diet, on your walking, your heart condition, or something like that. Always make sure you check with your primary care physician to see if it's okay. Or if you see a specialist, make sure that whatever it is that you do, always check with your primary care doctor before you do any, any kind of um, exercise, nutritional, um, dietary um, modifications, or anything like that, okay? So... Um, Lifting weights, you know, a lot of us don't have those weights at home. Um, I have spoke about uh, making your own weights at home. You know, you can get a, a water bottle, fill it up with water or sand or gravel and just lift it, you know, and that'll strengthen your muscles and, and the muscles attached to the bone and that will also strengthen the bone as, as you're lifting, you know. So if you do one bottle, and then you know use it to the next or get two bottles and then you can just get uh, if you get stronger after a while you can move up to milk cartons or not you know so in or just get those free weights um, to use that so there's a lot of different ways of keeping um, your bone strong because after we reach a certain age our bones might get brittle we could just hit ourselves and break a bone um, fall and break a hip or you know so just start now and try to make your bones stronger you know you're never too young and never too old to exercise and if you can't do any of the low impact or high impact exercises you know it's 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 good to be just moving even if you have to do chair exercises chair exercises will help you um, uh, for posture and flexibility you know you can um, just stretch and, and do some arm raises you know leg lifts leg lifts so um, you can also do that but that won't help you for bone density but it will help you for stretching your muscles um, help you sleep better and take keeping flexibility but if you can do high impact or low impact exercises you know high impact like I said jump roping climbing stairs is a high impact um, also um, gardening is also it could be considered a high impact type of exercise because you're out there mowing the lawn you're out there raking um, things like that so if you can just at least do 30 minutes a day to try to get your bones stronger your muscles tighter um, firm um, you know it's always good to do that because if we don't move we will get you know fat and this 
is five pounds of muscle. It's in dense. It's a dense type of, uh, of uh, five pounds. And the fat is not very good for you. So I'd rather have you have ten, five pounds of muscle than five pounds of fat um, because this will not help your heart any and this will. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this event. Stay healthy, be safe, and exercise at least 30 minutes a day. Eat plenty of colored fruits and vegetables to help with eyes also, with your eyes. So if you have any questions, um, I'm here, um, the Diabetes Prevention Program Coordinator, Christine Chavez at 884-7131. Thank you for being here. Be safe. Good morning. My name is Tyrone Lopez, and I am from the Gamma Autumn Nation under the Community Health Services HIV program, and I'm also a member of the Gamma Autumn Nation. Today, I will be talking about safer sex practices and conduct use. And hopefully that you'll enjoy my video, and I thank uh, Tucson Indian Center for inviting me to do this video. So, as as um, HIV program, what we do, we actually do STD screenings uh, for the tribal jails with the Indian Health Services. We also help out with the vaccines, the COVID vaccines and the flu vaccines, and that's part of our job. But also, we also go into the communities to talk about STDs and HIV, including hepatitis C. Our program also provides our clients with food if it's in the budget. We also have um, a talking circle for our clients as well. And sometimes we have little events throughout the nation or uh, just a little get together sometimes so our little talking circle is actually like a family. We invite new clients that just got diagnosed for HIV to come and join us. Just because majority of us uh, that are positive, we actually uh, kind of give them a little bit of help and understanding on what HIV is and what what's going to cause uh, cause them to stay in in care. We also transport our clients. We do grocery shopping for our clients as well, especially during the pandemic. Uh, we also help set up tra uh, not just transportation, but also their doctor's visits. So we actually have quite a few things that we do. Uh, my supervisor, Christopher Frimbris, and my coworker, Janice Pablo, they actually do acute detox. They use the beads and the needles. So depending on which one you're comfortable with, uh, you can always come and come to our office. I'm located in Cells, Arizona, at the health compound at the Blue Building. And you can always call, call and see if we're there, if someone's there to do that for you. So that's what our programs do. And we actually go into the, into the communities as well health fairs and wherever we're invited. Uh, right now, we're going to be doing uh, a session on puberty at the Young Men's Gathering in San Javier. And my supervisor will also be talking about healthy relationships as well as uh, condom use. Because a lot of times, you know, it's a little bit embarrassing, especially as men, to talk about these things, you know, it's more of a joke than anything else. We start joking around about it. But as far as HIV and other STDs, it's a serious thing. So I will start off with the condom demo. So basically for condom use, what we do is we tell them to look for an expiration date. And so the expiration date is usually in the back is very small print and it'll tell you if it's good or not. So the expired ones we usually use for demonstrations. So 
the only ones that are not uh, that are not uh, expired are our new ones. Most of these are expired because we haven't been able to get to do condoms or give out condoms for a while. We also say if you need condoms, you can always call our office and ask, uh, ask for either me, Chris, or Janice, and just ask for a brown bag special. So hopefully you know where to get them, or hopefully we can drop some off here at uh, Tucson Indian Center and they, they can give you some as well. So we look for the expiration date, and that will tell us if it's good or not. The other thing too is if you keep these in the car, and especially here in the heat, uh, don't keep them too long, maybe a day or two, or if you keep it in your wallet, we don't su really suggest either either one of these places uh, because it gets hot and your body gets hot as well. So the other thing I, I tell our clients and people that are getting ready for condom use is to check and see if there's an air, air pocket. If there's no air pocket, then don't use it. Throw it, discard it uh, in the trash. And, and what I usually tell people is, one, there's, there's a little, little cut right here, and that's where you're just going to tear it. Don't go like this. I know you, some of you guys are doing this number. The thing is, you could probably put a hole in the condom. So this is good to help with uh, STDs as well as unwanted pregnancies. We slide the condom all the way to the side. Let's open this. And I say look for the happy end, the sombrero, okay? The other thing too is I hear a lot of men, oh, I don't like condoms, they don't feel natural, they don't feel right. Well, get some lube, add it to the tip. And there's flavored lube as well as, as regular lube. Uh, there's all kind of type of lubes as well. And you're going to get the happy hat and roll it down, pinch the tip all the way to the base of the condom. I mean, to the base of the shaft of the penis. And what you're going to do then is do your thing. Once you're done, this is the time I tell uh, the ladies not to touch it. Because as men, <clears throat> we know that, you know, the erection, what happens is that we have an erection and once everything's done, you know, our penis shrinks. And so it's very easy to take off the condom. So basically what we're going to do, usually this is a little bit more softer. And so we're going to take this off. And the reason why I say don't, for the ladies not to touch it is because what I just did could have spillage all over and they could get it on their fingers. So then you go wipe, there still might be some uh, sperm on there, uh, some ejaculation, and who knows, you, could, you might end up having a, uh, end up getting pregnant because you're touching and wiping down there. So the next thing you do is you're going to tie it. So after you tie it, do not flush it into the toilet, especially here in the city because one, it may get caught in something, and then you're going to have to call your landlord. Then, of course, they're going to call the uh, the people um, to clear it out. So the other thing too, I tell people is, you know, it's just easy. Take a napkin, put it in the napkin, and throw it in the trash. So basically, that's how you do a condom. But I also suggest that as men that we practice using condoms and like I said is to help prevent STDs and HIV as well as unwanted pregnancies. Now the other thing about the STDs is that there are some that are curable and some that are not. But the other thing too is that we have to be honest with our physicians. We shouldn't be ashamed that we're, we're, we're still having sex. 
because the thing is, it's more, it's more to be proactive than not. So basically what happens is that if you get chlamydia, gonorrhea, it can, and you're a young person, you could actually, the more times you get it, the more times you may become uh, not able, I should say, you may not be able to have children because it will affect where the sperm comes out from, which is the testicles. So again, get treated as much as possible, especially if there's something going on down there and it doesn't feel right. And the other thing too is HIV is not curable, but you can live a long time with the medications that we have nowadays. The, uh, syphilis is another one, especially on the rise. Uh, I know here it's always been on the rise. And there's three different stages. You might not even know you have it, but as men, our equipment, as I say, is on the outside so we can see our penises. And so the thing is, if you have lesions or if you have sores on it, and if it doesn't feel good down there, go get checked out and be honest with your physicians. And with our testicles being in here, you know, it's reasonable to understand that this is where a lot of uh, bacteria can go into and then cause you to become sterile later on in life as well. So, get checked out just as well. You know, you should go into your yearly physical. Also, m men that are between 15 and 35 need to check their testicles, especially in the shower when it's nice and warm, to fill them and see if there's any lumps or any dis uh, anything that is not natural. If there is, you might want to get checked out for testicle cancer. The other thing too is, I tell those, I tell people, and it's just not within those ranges, but basically we see more between the 15 and 35 people uh, of age that are, that have testicle cancer. So it doesn't mean that if you're 45, you might not, you might have it as well. So again, it's just one of those things that you need to get checked out for. The other thing I, I tell people, especially men, and this is, it depends on you and your doctor, they say 45 on up is to get a colonoscopy. And that colonoscopy is what it's doing is looking, looking in your intestines for uh, cancer or if you're if you're bleeding for some somewhere within the intestines or even if you are uh, having diarrhea issues or some type of issues that's that has to do with your intestines they're going to check and it and they may take out some they may take out some pallets and if they do they're going to check it for cancer and granted, if it comes back cancerous, they're going to have you come back within three years or sooner, depending. Because as men, we don't consider these things. We don't even like going to the hospital. We say, ah, oh, I'm just going to spend, just waste a day there, you know. But it's your health we're talking about. Also, it's also your partner's health. And what I mean by that is that your partner is, wants you around to be around for a long time. You know, if you end up with cancer, you might not be, be there for that long. And of course, you know, things do happen. But to die from something that could have been prevented is a major way of looking at I could have done this earlier I could have got checked earlier but what I'm trying to say guys is take your health to heart 
and understand that um, that it is your health that we're talking about. These things do happen. And I just got my uh, colonoscopy not too long ago. They found some pellets. Uh, I took one a while back, probably about two years ago, three years ago at the most. And they found out that three of those pellets, four out of those three were cancerous. And this is coming from me. I'm sharing a little bit of my, my health issues as well with you. And so when they checked the pellets this time, they, were, they weren't cancerous, so I'm happy about that. And I thank you guys for allowing me to be here. Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Morkin, the U.S. Medical Director for Let's Get Checked. And here to talk to you briefly about erectile dysfunction. What is erectile dysfunction? Well, it's a topic that many men steer, aware, steer away from talking about or are understandably challenged when they have to talk about it. But erectile dysfunction is essentially defined as difficulty or inability to obtain or maintain an erection suitable for intercourse. What are the causes of erectile dysfunction? Well, erectile dysfunction, in terms of a diagnosis, can be challenging because it can be multifactorial and sometimes we don't even ever really find the true cause. But there are some certainly known causes or at least increased risk factors for erectile dysfunction. Medications can often cause problems with erectile function. Specifically, medications that treat blood pressure uh, or medications that can affect mood disorders uh, are linked very often to this side effect of the medication. And a man might find that they'd had no issues with erectile function until they started that new medication to manage their blood pressure or to help with their depression. And all of a sudden now erectile dysfunction has appeared in their life. Other causes for erectile dysfunction can be disease states. Most commonly, diabetes. Diabetes often will lead to erectile dysfunction uh, in, in, as well as a whole host of other potential problems. Uh, neurological diseases, uh, spinal cord injury uh, can lead or at least contribute to erectile dysfunction. What about diet? Well, obesity, which is very prevalent unfortunately in the United States today, has been linked to a higher incidence of erectile dysfunction. Heart disease, there's definitely a link between heart disease and erectile dysfunction. And actually, interestingly, occasionally a man might present complaining of erectile dysfunction, but as they begin to go through the evaluation, uh, it could uncover uh, some underlying um, heart disease that needs attention. And in terms of other risks or other uh, lifestyle things that can lead to it. Well, drug use, uh, marijuana use specifically, alcoholism, all of these things have shown to have increase in erectile dysfunction. How do we evaluate for erectile dysfunction? Well, there may be some baseline testing that would be helpful here. Testosterone is one that's often implicated, and so getting a baseline testosterone level can't hurt as well lipid profile uh, and cholesterol, looking at overall uh, heart health and vascular health is important to establish a baseline. Are there things that can be done to improve erectile function? Well, of course there are. Uh, limiting some of those uh, lifestyle choices that are, are bad, in other words, cutting out tobacco use, limiting alcohol or drug use, these can be helpful, but exercise can be helpful. So weight loss, controlling your weight, improving your diet, uh, they don't hurt erectile function and often they will help. Are there other things that can be used to help with erectile function besides lifestyle changes? There are. 
And these are the commonly prescribed medications that almost everybody will see advertised if you watch any media these days. These are the medications like Viagra or Cialis. Uh, these are safe medications in the properly selected patient and can impactfully improve erectile function if used correctly. So looking at those baseline tests that we talked about, looking at lifestyle changes, and then perhaps considering medication to augment sexual function can all be helpful for a man who's struggling with this challenging and very common concern. If you have any more questions or concerns and would like to know more about diagnosis and management of erectile dysfunction, I invite you to go to letsgetcheck.com where through live chat or a telephone call, you can actually speak to one of our nursing team to gather a little bit more information. Hello, uh, my name is Alan Jose. I'm Don Autumn. I work here at the Tucson Midland Center as a transport and records specialist. Um, I provide non-emergency medical transport for uh, the clients here. Um, I also pick up medication and deliver them to your home or you can pick them up here at Tucson Midland Center. Um, uh, we do not provide transportation on and uh, medication pickup on Mondays, but Tuesdays and Fridays are good. Uh, we ask that you request medication pickup or transportation at least a day in advance. Uh, that gives us notice to put you on our schedule. We offer uh, transportation to medical appointments in the Tucson area or Tucson Area Clinic. And um, we also pick up medication and deliver them. Um, just uh, let us know where you want them to be delivered to. Uh, as far as uh, requesting transportation or medication pickup, we ask you to do it in advance or a day in advance, or the sooner the better. Um, we don't do same day. You know, it gets too uh, busy for us, so we ask that you uh, give us uh, at least a, a day in advance notice. And um, you can call me at 520-331-7134, and that is the cell phone. You can uh, call me or text me, and you can also leave a message. I do check my voicemails and I do respond. So, um, also you can email me at alan or a jose at tircenter.com dot org. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much what I do. Also have Marcella here that will help me uh, if my if I need help. Marcella is also available to uh, transport or medication. And um, that's about it. Have a good day. Thank you for joining us at our 2022 Men's Day Virtual Celebration. Before we let you go, we just want to share what is happening right now at the Tucson Indian Center and what is to come. Every Thursday from 4.15 to 5.15 p.m., we have our Native Sisters in Recovery group. And right after Native Sisters at 5.30, we have our White Bison group, and that ends at 6.30 p.m. On Friday mornings, we have AA meetings from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. All meetings will be here at the Tucson Indian Center's second floor, located at 160 North Stone Avenue. And if you can't join us in person, you can join us via WebEx. We are still practicing COVID precautions, so masks and temperature checks are still required. Please reach out to Christina Luna or myself, Cassandra de Leon Guerrero, for more information. Through our diabetes prevention program, we have group nutrition workshops and consultations with registered dietitian nutritionist Dominique Henry, who you saw earlier in the video. And if you are diabetic and in need of glasses, we have partnered with Savano Eye Care to provide you with free eye exams and glasses. This is handled by Christine Chavez, our Diabetes Prevention Coordinator, who you also saw earlier in this video. Please give TAIC a call for more and ask for Christine. Every second Monday of the month, our Two-Spirited Group meets from 5 o'clock to 6.30 p.m. And every month, we have an Elders Luncheon from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. This month, our monthly luncheon will be on June 29th that is a Wednesday from, of course, 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m.
If interested in either events, please contact Marlene Jose. Next month, we'll be having our Native Summer Spirit Youth Program from July 12th to July 22nd, and July 12th to July 15th will be for our younger kids, ages 8 to 12, and from July 20 to July 22nd will be for ages 13 to 17. You can get applications here at the Tucson Indian Center, or you can go to our website at www.ticenter.org. Scroll down and click on the Native Summer Spirit Youth Program flyer, and it'll take you right to the electronic application. Slots are filling up, so please call for more information. TIC's Health Services Department will be opening the Rodney Palimo Senior Clinic very soon. The clinic will be on the third floor, where you can get COVID-19 medical services, along with primary care services as well. In the meantime, our Health Services Department will be having vaccine pods every Wednesday of this month. Please give our Health Services Department a call for more information. Our Social Services Department can help you find a job, assist with resumes, networking, clothing, and much more. They are currently hosting leadership classes every Tuesday here at TIC. Reach out to Jerry Romero, Stella Tarin, or Tiffany Santa Maria for more. There will be lots of wonderful events coming to the community very soon, starting with our first Summer Well Variety event at the Ramada Inn on July 29th. It will be an all-day event from 8 o'clock to 5 p.m. The following week, on Tuesday, August 2nd at 5.30, we will be having a free movie night at the Loft Cinemas featuring the movie Indian Horse. Before school starts, be on the lookout for our back-to-school bash for the kids. And following that event, we will be having our social powwow in the fall. And in November, we will be having our Native American Family Wellness Day. And with that, we hope you took away something from this video and take steps toward prioritizing your health in a timely way. Thank you so much to all the guest speakers who participated in TIC's 2022 Men's Day event and made it possible, especially you. Now, don't wait till it's too late. Take care and we will see you here at the center.